you have to be able to be, you know, flexible. Like, yeah. you gotta... Like, relationships, I think, is a big compromise. And it's more of a... I hate to sound like this. It's a business. Like, you gotta treat it like a, a business. Like, you have to put in work. If you do not sell or you do not promote your product or anything, you will not create revenue. You will not make any money. You can't pay them bills. So with the relationship, you really have to put in work. You just can't tell me that you love me. You just can't sit here and be in my face every day. I need you to put in work. I need you to show me that you love me. And by showing me, I need you to co communicate effectively. Those ambitions that you have, I need you to be working towards your goals and, and getting things done. And if I can help anyway. Yeah, like, and that's where I'm saying it's a business. Like, we have to work together for the greater good of both of us. Because two is always better than one. Yeah. So why not work together? Why not treat it as a business? Because you know, you ain't gonna let nobody play about your money. At the end of the day, you're not letting nobody play about your money. You should feel the same way about your relationship. I'm not letting nobody play with my relationship. I'm not letting nobody play with you. If I know I love you, I know I got your back, I'm riding till the wheels fall off. episode of Ladies Room Live is sponsored by Trilogy Cigars. Trilogy is a Black-owned cigar company with over 20 different cigar brands. You can purchase the cigars from our website, TrilogyCigarCompany.com. Welcome to Ladies Room Live. Thank you so much, Christina, for coming on. This is you are Christina so Granville. Hey. Anyone who does not know needs to know that she is Miss Basketball <laughs> One on hey. all her social media panels. So welcome. Welcome. Hey. I'm excited to be here. This is so nice, so pretty. Thank so you. excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's just share a little story. Ooh. Can you think back to how we met? Wow. Oh my God. Let's see. Oh, goodness. I think it was like good girl energy that night, I must say. It was, I don't know what event we were at, but it's just like we, our energy just synced. It was like, oh my God, oh my God. And it was like, oh, you're from Florida. Oh, I'm from Florida. Oh my God. Look, we got to exchange numbers. Did you just move here? Yeah, I just moved here. I'm, I'm trying to think, where was that? I'm not sure. Where was it? Because I think you know. And <laughs> I, I don't know exactly. remember. I know exactly. And sometimes I have not so good of a memory. Okay. And sometimes my memory is like on point, but maybe because I prepared to talk, sit down and Ooh. talk to you, I like was like, okay, let me get all this. So we was at, I think it was Boogaloo. I don't really go out that much. We're in okay. Atlanta. Boogaloo. But I think it was Boogaloo. Swing. I don't know. Yeah, but we wasn't at the swing part. So I'm not sure if it was Boogaloo. Okay. I know that there was a DJ by the section that we were sitting okay. on. Um. And it did happen very organic. I don't know what event was there, but I was there celebrating one of my um, girlfriend's birthday party. Okay. And I saw you, which I've already seen her on social media, <laughs> meanwhile, because she has, like, 88K. That's where you're at right <laughs> yeah. now? Yeah. She has, like, 88K followers on IG. So I've already, like, seen her. Um, and I was like, but I... You know how you see somebody and you're like... I, like, know them. I know her from somewhere. Like, I don't know her, know her, but, like, I'm pretty sure we know some of the same people because for some reason we were, like, I don't know. Yeah. I was, like, maybe she lived in Tampa or something. I don't know. But, like, I, I, I don't know. I just felt that. So then, like, I'm just minding my business, and then we just, like, had this, like, little girl moment. Yes. She was, like, ooh, and I was, like, ooh. Yes. It's like, hey, girl. Because you know, if you know her, she's always walking around with her abs out. <laughs> oh, God. Did I have my abs out that night? I don't know. But oh, I think God. you did. So Lord. that's what happened. And then ever since then, like, we've just been cool. Yes. Oh, nice, good energy. Right. You know, that right. Florida energy is contagious. It you has know. to be. We crazy. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> It is always good energy yes. once we meet each other, especially when we're not like in the city, uh, in the city or even the state that we're from. Yes, for real. You'd be so excited to see somebody from Florida. It's so weird because when you're in Florida, it's like, oh, where you from? Oh, okay, that's what's up. 
You soon as you leave out of Florida and you see somebody, what's up? <laughs> Where were you from? What's up, friend? Dang, what up, bro? Dang, that'd be crazy though. You start talking like you're from Florida and everything. Yeah. It's, it's it's like it's nothing like being from a state that you just love. Cause I, I love being from Florida. I don't care what nobody say. That's like, you so country, yo. But did you always love being from Florida? I mean, except when the hurricane came. I mean, I don't care about other than that. Other than that, yeah, I love the weather. I don't like when it rains all the time, but I love the weather. I love being able to be able to ride four wheelers and dirt bikes, or yeah. go on horseback riding, or you from the you know, country, I'm, girl. I'm, yeah, you I'm, know you ain't getting out all across yeah, the I am, Talk I to somebody country. from Miami. Talk to somebody from Jack. <laughs> they ain't experiencing all yeah, this unless am, it's like, ooh. Like people are like, oh, I know you. You from Florida? You went to the beach all the time. I've only been to the beach like five times in my life before, before moving to Atlanta. Okay, that makes sense. Because it I, only makes sense because I know where you're from. Yes, and it's not surrounded by water. It is so not. That makes sense. So we're right under Lake Okeechobee, which is in between Fort Myers, Fort Myers. I mean Fort Myers, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. But it's not like we going, we getting up and going to the beach, or is that accessible every, you know, every day? It's that was not happening. So yeah, it was. That's an hour, thirty minute drive. So we we weren't going to the beach like that. So usually when people say, "Oh, you from Florida?" I know you was at the beach. I'm like. I wasn't like I wasn't I wasn't living the beach life, but yeah, I'm I love Florida. I'm so excited to be from Florida. Like I rep my city, eight six three five six one Palm Beach County, Henry County, all that good stuff. So <laughs> I know I love y'all, Monk City. What's up, <laughs> Harlem? What's up, Closer? What's up, Bell Glade, Pahokee, South Bay? What's up? You shot in the whole, the whole, all this, the whole thing. Like, you, yeah, I'm from here, but I'm from all this right here. We all this thing. Yes, you have to though. You, you really have to, cause a lot of people, like, especially where I'm, where I'm from, being an athlete. My family is actually from there, so I can really understand. Like, when you, a lot of people don't understand. Uh, you see, when you think of Florida, you see Florida. You think about the touristy part. You think about the sunshine. You think about it, but then you come to the real parts. Like your Clues and your Pahokies, your Bell Glade, Porky Bean Projects in Miami, you come to these areas to where it's like, dang, you from there? Like when I tell people where I'm from, they're like, oh, where you is that? Yeah, you live there? And it's it's a it's almost an accomplishment to make it out and, and become something, uh, to become a success story for the most part, because most people stay. Most yeah. people, you know, get get sucked in, you know, the, the regular things that they do. And I just thank God that, you know, I had parents who pushed me to, you know, to have my education, to play sports, to get out and see the world and do more than just say, hey, you know, I'm gonna just chill in, in Clueless and in Pahokee, you know, and do whatever, whatever. But I mean, it's a great city, great community, but it's just, it's a struggle. I mean, even ESPN has done a 30 for 30 on uh, on our little town. So it's, it's, it's crazy uh, being from there, but I, I love Florida. I'll tell you anybody real quick, I'm from Florida, what's up? <laughs> For Florida, what's up? <laughs> I got the same thing. I have the same feeling when it comes to talking about a place that I am from, knowing that my whole entire family is from there. Yes. You know? And I take the good, the bad, the you ugly, and I just kind of roll with it. You, you have know? To, it makes you who you are. Like we're we are very, very tough individuals. I don't I don't care what nobody say. Like anybody from Florida, they gonna Hey, they stand tall, ten toes down. So how do you feel about when they when things go on on social media and then they're like, oh, okay, put in what was the thing, Florida a man Flo on this day? Oh lord! And then they show all the yeah. Florida people doing some crazy. I, do I mean, you that... feel like I feel like yeah, these people have done this crime in Florida, but they're not from Florida. That too, and I feel like stuff is going on everywhere. Yeah, we could easily say everybody from Atlanta is this, 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 and that. Well, you know well, what I'm we, saying? We maybe kind of right. But I mean, you just no never offense. know. You just never know. So when these when these heinous crimes happen or something weird happens, oh, let's be in Florida again. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Like, hey, like, like don't let me go to your city. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know your city got something going on. It's just put in the light a little bit more than other because it happens a little bit frequent. But I don't, I don't trip about when they when they talk about it. I just be like, oh, all right. Who who was that? Oh, I don't even know that man. Keep going. Look, He's my relative. Exactly. I don't even know Is that he man. Black? Exactly. All right. Exactly. And most and, and, and unfortunately, <laughs> most of the time when stuff crazy stuff is yeah. happening, you be like, oh, that man ain't even. You know what I'm saying? That's a person. Now you person. know that man ain't his right mind. Exactly. So right. I don't be tripping. So let's talk about your family a little bit. So your mom and dad are both from Harlem. Nope. Florida. They are not. My are dad from? is from my my dad was an immigrant worker. He is from Jamaica. Okay. Burn Savannah, Jamaica. Um, he came here long, long years ago. 
Um, and he has been there for a while. My mom is from Mississippi. Oh. Uh, she came uh, to Harlem as a teacher. I love to work mama. in a segregate. Um, everybody, everybody loves. Love, <laughs> I love this girl's mama. She love is. Uh, mama. She is just. She is my blueprint. She is a, a ball. Of, people think I got a lot of energy. As you know, my mom is just a ball of, of life, of energy. She's just... And you just... play these jokes on her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, got to. Oh, keep her young. I, I I live for just making her scream and be like, oh, my God! Da, 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 da. Like, she, she's just so awesome. My mom and dad have been married for 51 years, going on 52. Um, and I'm the baby girl of 10. So being from a family like that and... and oh, yeah, so much, so much love. People are like, why are you so outgoing? Man, my, my whole family is like that. And I try to share that with people on, on social media because it's like it's important for them to see black families that, that can has have that yes. much love. Like and we still don't have fun. Yeah. And it's not no dictatorship. Yeah, like I tell people all the time, it's like something everybody got this one person in their family. And I legit be having to raise my hand, like, yo, I didn't go through that. I don't have these sad stories to give you. Now, of course, we all went through stuff. My mom used to split Whopper Jr. She used to go up to Burger King. She'd get a Whopper Jr. and split it in fours, sometimes in six. And that's what we ate. But I don't have those sad stories to tell people like, oh, well, we had to go through the worst of the worst. And, you know, this, 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 this. I had an uncle that was drunk. I had a sister that did this. Or my mom was on cocaine. I don't have those sad yeah. stories. And I thank God for that. But I come from a king and a queen who are blessed and highly favored. And it has been bestowed on me. So I, I legit be looking at my family like, yo, I got a really dope family. Like, I legit be, like, excited. Every time we get together, it's not... It's not one of those, well, I gotta see my mama now. I gotta see my cousin, my daddy now, and my brother. It's not a disappointing it, thing. No, it is a celebration. Yeah. And it's like, you, dang. You make that come across on your social media page every single time. It's like that you every time. The, you show it in like the rawest form, yeah. too. Yeah. So just to hear you talk about it, it makes me want to even see it more. Yeah, we, we in the backyard jamming. We come out there with a speaker. And mind you, we got mango trees and cane and, you know, Jamaicans, they always planting something in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, like, we got a little speaker. We'll turn a speaker on. And this is stuff that we used to do growing up. Because, yeah. mind you, we didn't have, like, cell phones, cell phones like that with internet. I had my little Nokia phone. But we, in order for us to have fun, we dance. We, we listen to music. We come up with songs. Like, when it's birthdays, and I show on Instagram all the time, or Facebook, when it's birthdays, we got our own birthday song. And we all clapping, using different pots and instruments. You know, we're, we're doing something. It's always a celebration. It's like it's not a dull moment. And if it is, that's kind of because we sleep because we didn't eat a lot because yeah. we always eating. So, I, I mean, my, my family is just so... Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm truly blessed to have a family like the family that I have because when I do go to other people's houses or I see their families and I see different relationships and their dynamics and their family, I'm like, dang, like, you don't... Y'all, you don't talk to your mama? So are you like a burst of sunshine when you enter into other people's family? Like, do they know how to take that? It's more of a... They know how to take it, but then they get really attached. Like, it's like all my exes, they mama love me. Like, all my friends, I, you know, anybody I come in contact to, for the most part, they really love me and be like, oh, my God, girl, you got to be my... You gotta be my daughter-in-law. I'm like, but your son don't want to act right. <laughs> Period. Like Ooh. it's not a match. like yeah, but their the, the parents love it. Like, why are you so outgoing? Why are you so loving? Like, you could just tell you come from a good family. I'm like, yeah, my my whole family is like this. Like, you gotta blame my mom and my daddy. Like, <laughs> that's just it's. I'm I'm a descendant of them. Like they just they just put it in me. So when I meet people and I come in contact with people who don't have that same kind of relationship, I think they get attached to what I have going on with my family. And it's like, you know, I got to have a piece of that. And when they do get a piece of it, it's like, I don't want to let that go because I've never experienced that. Yeah. I want I want to continue to be cool with your family. But I'm like, nah, once you're done with me, you're done with them. We know, no, nah, no, nah, you got to keep, keep, keep on. Have you always been like that, though? Mm. Like, ha, ha, ha... because I feel like sometimes when people love the best parts of you, mm -hmm it's hard to, like, not want to create the best part of them that you may see, yeah. no matter the destruction that you may yeah, I, be experiencing from them. I, I, it was really, I wasn't always like that, but after a while, like, you know, dealing with the ex for, for years and him being attached to my family and then trying to separate from him and, like, be like, yo, like, this is we, done. Did, like, we, let's cut. 
it would be so more. I can move on. Yeah, you can move on. Yeah, it yeah. would be more of a. But how your daddy doing? Or I want to go see your mom and dad. Like, no. Or your I, I called your sister today. Like he knew birthdays. It was. And I'm not saying it was it was bad because I think that's what when you're in a relationship you should want to know all these different things about people's families how they was brought up you should want really want to dig into that yeah. but he was so attached to it because it was a feeling that he's never felt before he's never felt that whole having family members really when they say they love you they don't just, they're not just telling you that they show you that and you yeah. feel it when you walk in a room with my family you feel it you gonna every kind of emotion you can think you gonna feel it if they don't like you. You gonna feel it <laughs> if they if, if they love you. You gonna feel it like it is what it is. They they we all carry you get, our they heart. give it to you wrong. Yeah, we carry our hearts on our on our on our um, on our shoulders, and I know I do. And I'm working on trying not to, but it was hard for him to detach himself from that because he was so invested in like that whole idea of like yo. I'm he even it was so bad he even told my parents that he would change his last name to my last name, right. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody out there looking Every crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still to this day, he said, yeah. That's a beautiful... I mean, I would say that's a beautiful thing, but would that be something that you would want? No. Okay. Absolutely okay. not. Absolutely not. So that was not. like a ticket as to something that you had to say, all right, yeah, but yeah it was, this yeah. is not for But me. it was more of a... Um, more of a like a confirmation to I really come from a good family. When yeah. I think times are hard or we because every family have their own little issues or yeah. whatever. When I think something is really going on between us and I'm like, oh, I can oh, here we go again. That made me really think, you know what? I really I have a, a good foundation. Yeah, I really have a great family with a good foundation that people wish they had. Do you think it's because you lived in the country? The only reason why I say that, so both of my parents are from Florida. Mm -hmm. My mom is from this small city okay, like Harlem yeah. called Lake Placid, Florida. I, my dad has a church there. I know exactly where you're from. And yep. it's, it's really small. Yeah, very small. But when small. I say my mom is from there, like, we ha I have grandparents in the grave. Oh. Yeah, like my great-grandmother, my great-great-grandmother yeah. was buried there. My great-grandmother was born there, which I knew both of them. Yeah. So that's a blessing. My family is rooted there, like, yes. heavily. Um, my dad is from Miami. Okay. His dad is from Overtown. His okay. His mom is from Liberty City. Oh, yes, Now, Lord, Miami. the dynamic, like, yeah, <laughs> that's real Miami, yes. you know. The dynamic of the two is that I find that my mom's family mm -hmm. is very, very close. Like, I grew up with, like, extended cousins. Like, not first cousin, second cousin, third cousins, mm -hmm. but fourth cousins. Like, in my great-grandmother's tree, we was going to Thanksgiving. It was like 50, 60 of oh, yeah. us. And five, six generations. Oh, you yeah. Know? Um, but on my dad's side of the family, it the, the the closeness wasn't there. And I don't know if it's because like they lived in this really big, fast city, and my mom lived in this city probably with like three street lights. Hmm. I, you know what's so funny? We don't even have street lights in Harlem. I know. <laughs> but even still, the, the smallness yeah, to it I to think... explain. I think sometimes what it is, it's really about... That's crazy. I had to think about that. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Lights. No street lights. It's crazy. We still don't have street lights. Um, but I think what it really is, is when you come from a small town, it's like your family is all you know. And if you come from a, if you come from good soil, you will produce a good, good fruit. Yeah. Good vegetables. Whatever, whatever good soil you got, you'll produce something good. She bringing us back to the basics. Okay? <laughs> But I think what it is when, like, a, a city like Miami, you have a lot of people from there who are very close-knit, you know? But then you have the flip side. They just got turmoil. I think it just depends on what kind of family you come from. Because yeah. it's, like, it's, it's generational. It's not, like, for instance, my family being all this close-knit, it didn't just start with my, my mom and dad. It had to start somewhere else. Yeah. Because who showed them how to be a family? You know what I'm saying? Like, who really encouraged them to say, Listen, when you get your mom, when you get your kids, you need to do X, Y, and Z, Z, Z. You know, I think it just really starts like that. And unfortunately, when you come from, like, a broken home, you kind of create that same cycle unless you change it. But I maybe from being from a small town kind of had a little bit to do with that because you really got to, like, be There's close There's really nowhere for you to go. Yeah, and you, you know, know everybody. Like, I mean, I don't... I don't know. It just, I think it really depends because we got some people in our town, they don't talk to their mom. You know, their family's not, you know, anything popping. So you, 
You just don't know. It's just, it's just the dynamics of where you come from, who instilled family values into you, and then how are you moving on through life and how are you encouraging your family members to say, hey, we blood. And yeah. blood is truly thicker than water, not the other way around. So it just depends. I like it. <laughs> but we touched on it, kind of. You kind of brought it up a little bit. Ooh. You brought up this ex-boyfriend. Ooh, so hey, ex-boyfriend. And, and I want to bring up, mm -hmm. like, what you put on your social media, okay. too, as well. You always talk about, like, dating mm -hmm. and what's out there and, like, your struggles Ooh, with it. And you're really blood raw to it. Mm -hmm. Um. And I also want to speak on a little bit about you being a TV personality, <laughs> which you never rep, but you went on a dating mm -hmm. show. And I just want to know, how is your dating life since all of these things? And what have you learned? And, Ooh, Lord. you know, what do you find attractive in a man? Oh, wow. So where did we start? Let's start with your first question. Ex-boyfriend. He's somewhere. Being you great. don't even have to touch him here. Oh, okay, great. You brought great. up the ex-boyfriend. I was going to say, God, get into the relationship. God bless that man. Uh, which about me, he was the best boyfriend I ever had. No hard feelings. I think he's a, a great guy. We just weren't meant to be together. Right. Um, moving I wasn't on from that. I about the ex boyfriend because oh. I would never want nobody Ooh, asking Jesus. that question. Listen, but, I'm, and I'm, I'm okay because we all have to learn, and I learned a lot in that relationship. So, moving on. Um, let's see. Dating in Atlanta. Um, of course, I've been in a movie that was called Dating in Atlanta. And I played the role of Ebony. She was a gold digger. Uh, Miss Fitz Plaza. She was just the hot mess for the most part. Um, but with doing that movie and then actually being somebody in Atlanta that's trying to date, I'm like, Jesus, why is this so difficult? And I think it's it's really Are you uh, your character. No, okay. I w shoot. I wish I had the courage to be Ebony. <laughs> You but, had the courage to play Ebony. Oh, yeah, of course. But, from somewhere. but acting acting is different. Um, like, even, even there's videos of me, just a young girl putting on the show or yeah. with a hat or doing something crazy. I love entertaining. I can get into characters so quick and, you know, get in and out of characters. I can play an old lady. I can play the mean. Like, I play baby mama, and I've never been a baby mama. Like, it's just different characters. And I think with Ebony, it was a little bit easier to play her because I'm like, I wish I could be as confident yeah. as her and be like, I don't need no man for nothing. He gonna buy me this, 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 so and have Ebony no be your remorse. Her ego. Um, I mean, with the way this dating life was going, Ebony was like, she was on some like, shoo, you need to teach the. Do, 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 do. Um, I don't think no. Nah, Ebony couldn't be my alter ego because she just raw. She just she too much. She a lot. She was she was ruthless. She was really ruthless, but she had it going on, and she reminds me of a lot of girls who are in Atlanta, who really just go after these men that have money, who want, you know, the Chanel bags, who want the, all the materialistic things, but their soul is empty, who want to ride around in a, in a Mercedes and want to tell other girls how they should be dealing with this type of man. Girl, you need to make him buy this and buy that. But they live on an air mattress. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the kind of the girl Ebony was. And I know that wouldn't be my alter ego because uh, I got my own place, OK? Um, <laughs> but... Um, <gasps> I just liked the way how she was just super confident. She didn't care what nobody thought. Like, she was telling other girls, X, do this, do that, do that. So I couldn't play Ebony in real life. But um, dating in real life in Atlanta, it's, it's somewhat of a headache because these guys look, and not, not all of them, because uh, I think there's some great guys and we just don't mix because I ain't got time for the foolishness. Uh, but these guys look great on paper. But I think we're not giving them, uh, we're not holding them to a standard into a level of respect and guidelines that they have to follow because they just feel like they can just do whatever they want to do. Do you think that's just men in Atlanta? No, I think it's because everywhere. I, I have friends and we all yeah. talk openly about this yeah. whole dating thing. And they don't even live in Atlanta. They don't even come to Atlanta and they're experiencing some it's, of the same thing. It's, so. every, it's everywhere because you have a lot of men now who are... And this is just to be honest, and I can't speak for every man, but you have a lot of men who are dealing with so much stuff, especially as a black man. They're you dealing with... black man. Oh, of course. Let, let's be very I'm just, clear. I'm just asking, you know, because the pool opens wider if you want to date something else. So I know, I'm just I've never... A I know. Bit. I've never... I've never dated outside my race. I wanted to, but it just never... Let's set you up. No. <laughs> Look, no. I just... I wanted to, I said, I wanted to try it one good time. Yeah. Just one good time. But it just never, 
spot off. Just never spot off, but shoot, if you gonna set it up, I mean, nothing can hurt. I you mean, know, I so. think I'm a good matchmaker. I'm just not good when it comes to me. But oh, we'll true. All my matches that. then got married. I'm still over here like, whew. All your matches then got married? Married, yeah. Married. In love. Wow. Well, you know, One honestly, of them got a divorce by now, but uh, that they didn't got married. And I'm still over here like, Did you right, want to say something evil with it? No. Oh, okay. I wasn't going to say nothing <laughs> evil at all, at all. But um, I think all the guys uh, are going through a transitional period of what they really want. I think guys really don't know what they want because nowadays it's so easy to get a girl or to get the cow. You know, it's like, well, I'm going to buy... Well, I'm going to get some milk from you. And, you know, I, mean, I got a cow over here that's chilling, that's ready to do any and everything, and I ain't got to do nothing. So it's like these guys are really just... There's no work. And anything that requires work is you're being too difficult or you got too much stuff going on or it's like you, your expectations are uh, unrealistic. They're, they're just used to the easy way. And I think it stems from women not knowing their worth, saying like, yo, like I don't have to settle for what everybody else is doing. I, I want what I want. And I'm going to wait and I'm going to require it from me, and I'm gonna set a standard, and I'm say these are the guidelines. This is this is what I want. This is what you're gonna give me. You're not gonna half a me, you know, like into just oh, I'm gonna just give it a little bit because other girl over here, she was cool with it. See, I think it's that, and I think you have a clear point, and yeah. I definitely think that it's that. But I also feel that men who look good on paper, you know, and <laughs> they're ready paper. for the next step in life, mm -hmm. and they want a woman that looks good on paper and is ready for the next step in life, yeah. when they get in a relationship together, he still wants her to submit in a way that she probably is not willing to submit. And I don't mean submit yeah. in, like, the 1950s way where she has to come home, yeah. feed and the cook. kids, yeah, yeah, cook, yeah. clean, and do all the woman things, but then also go out and make a life for herself. I mean, I think sometimes a man is asking for unrealistic things from a woman when she is supposed to be his equal. Well, and I... that See, ends, I also feel... Um, that it's it's men playing the role sometimes of not wanting to work, not wanting to support himself, not having a pot to piss in, yeah. not having anything for himself, Ooh, and him feeling like, you know what, like, I'm just going to be out here, I guess, being an entrepreneur or whatever the case may be. Lord. And Thank God I ain't have to run into those, because, boy, baby I mean, boy. I'm not really saying this through my experience. No, I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, that's what's going yeah. on. Because I've, I've heard that from other women, too. It's like... I see I, I see it sometimes, and I'm just kind of like... How are you You have man? so much going for yeah. yourself looking at the girl, and I'm not being judgmental because yeah. somebody can look at me and judge me for yeah. whatever it is, and somebody can look at, you know, the man that I choose to be with and judge him for being with me or whatever the yeah. case may be. We all have something. But sometimes I do look at women when they do put themselves in that situation, and I'm just kind of like, all right, I, I, I get that, like, we're trying to come together yeah. and, like help support and be all of this but at one point is he gonna step up and be that man like Check. i think a man is, should be a provider and this is that not is me truth. saying this is a standard for all men i'm just saying if you want to be in my life yeah if i want to i want to be happy for my friend but i want to see my friend supported in a certain way amen. or my sister my cousins and stuff like that and man that's just i i get it i um I honestly, uh -oh. I honestly, from, you know, seeing my mom and dad, I know it's not 50-50. Like, I don't, I don't even go into relationships saying it's 50-50, we equal. Do you think equal. the woman puts in more? Or do no. you think the man puts in more? Man. Okay. He's the head. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I honestly believe that. And I think once you get into a relationship, there's some kind of submissiveness that you need to give your husband you or to. your, your, this is the problem. You should be being submissive to your husband. A lot of people are now out here dating, trying to be submissive, trying to play these wife roles. And it's like, why are you doing wife roles and you're not a wife? You're a girlfriend. So tell me something, because I think I fall victim of that mm -hmm. sometimes. Me too, child. Cleaning and cooking and everything else. Oh, so you <laughs> preaching to yourself in the Oh, party. yeah. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. So now that you're not in a relationship, how do you not submit to a boyfriend 
that you really want to be with and that you do see a future with? Um, I don't know, because I haven't, I haven't had that just yet. I haven't had another boyfriend since my ex-boyfriend. Um, How do you just date? I think it's just, you know, men and, well, more like dating in Atlanta or dating anywhere for the most yeah. part for me. It's just more of, you know, trying to see what they really want. Like, I know exactly what I want. So sometimes with what the men... This? Let's talk about it. Ooh. How you doing? Did, did you make the perfect man list? Nope. I didn't make the perfect man list. Did you make... I well, when I say the perfect man yeah. list, something that's perfect for you. Gotcha. So I made the perfect man list. Okay. Um, but did you make a perfect man list? I what made, made you know that you know exactly what you want? I made... Well, after all the stuff that I've been through, no, show me exactly what I don't want. Okay. Um, but I made a list about five or six core things that I really needed. Um, and just from looking at that list and knowing what I have to offer and knowing the end goal, and that's me being married and having kids, I'm like, okay, these are the five core things that I really, really need. Um, and trying to date and, and, and implement those core things is really hard because nine times out of ten, most of the guys that I, I, I run into, again, they look great on paper. Like, great on paper. And then it's like, you, you, you start dealing with them and it's, it's something totally different. It's, oh, well, I, you know, I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. It, it, yeah, they want... They want, yeah. I'm not rolling my eyes. Like, I can't, I, like, in disbelief, it's just annoying. It is very annoying, but it's one of those things, like, my mom say, like, what are you gonna do? You really have to, when you're dating, you really have to date. And this is why I love, when white people date, I'm sorry, when they date, <laughs> they date. You know what I'm saying? They, they going out, going with Jane today, I'm going with John tomorrow, huh? Jim, oh, hi, Jim. Like, they are legit. And there's no judgment. Exactly. There's but no when, judgment. But so when you see me out with him today. Yes, mind your business. Mind your business. Yes, I tell people that because all the time. Because when you see him out with her, what do you do? You mind your it, business. Exactly. So I, I try to make sure, like, if I do, like, now I'm dating, right? I'm, I'm in the dating pool. I'm going out. Um, I'm dating. You, when you date, are you open about that you're dating? Like, do you tell this person, like, I'm dating, so this is not an exclusive thing? And I if you see me out, it's not a disrespect. It's just, do you have that conversation? I have that this conversation. This is where I always get yeah. stuck. I have the conversation, but it's more like, if I'm having this conversation with you now, that means I actually care. Because nine times out of 10, if we just dating, I don't have to disclose any of that to you. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just one of those things, like, we're just seeing how this is gonna go. I don't need to tell you too much information. Now, if I like you and I care about your feelings, hey, I just want to let you know that I'm, I am dating. You know, I'm, I'm trying to see what it is I really want, but I also like spending time with you. And wow. if you see me with somebody, you whatever, which nine times out of 10, I'm going to make it in my best interest so you don't see me, period. Like, I just... I don't think they ever should see you. Yeah, like, I don't... Because I, I, I wouldn't want to see it. Like, if I know I'm dating somebody and he's already expressed to me that he's dating and I see him out, I wouldn't want to see that as a woman. Like, I don't I don't want to see that. Oh, if I see him out, I think he's cheating. See? And but we're not cheating because we're dating. I know, but, like, I haven't got to that point in my life... You have where to. ...where I feel that. Like, you you're have... not going to see me, so I feel like I shouldn't see you if we're dating. But, like, if you if I do see you, then, like, you cheated on me, I don't want to talk to you no more. And, and see, like, you, can't, should... you can't be I that know. way because I'm we're trying all trying to... Trying to trying. We're trying to figure it out. So even now with, with dating... And, like, I'm dating someone now, and I have to make sure that... I mean, I'm already... I, I know that I like this person, but I'm not going to be like, oh, well, you're just letting you know I'm dating this person, this person, this... Because I'm really not, because I don't know where it's going with the other people. I'm just going, hey, let's enjoy it. Let's see where it goes. And I'm going to make it my best interest that if I go anywhere, or I'm going to go, I ain't going where you going, but if I go anywhere, I'm going to make sure that you don't never see me with somebody else. Because right. I don't want your feelings or your energy to change. Regardless of the fact that we just dating. Yeah. Like, well, I just... Atlanta, and it's kind of small. Of course. I mean, you can definitely go to a, a lot of other places, but, like, a person cannot see you, yeah. but also hear... And, and see, the, also, the type of guys that I, I date, they're not really in Atlanta like that. I mean, they live here in Atlanta, yeah. but they're working. They work a lot. They're traveling here. They got to do this X, Y, and Z. So it's kind of one of those things, like, if you do see me with him, then, oh, okay. Oh, well. Like, but yeah. not until I tell you, you're not going to see me with, you know... With nobody. So let's talk about this perfect man. Ooh. Like, man. how did you make your, like, was it, like, situations that you're like, okay, 
I went through this, I don't want this, and this helped me know that I do want this. I... The first and foremost thing is somebody, a man that communicates effectively. Mm. Like, it's top of my list, because I think that's the number one thing that guys don't know how to do is communicate. And they think texting or just, like, one-word text messages or not fully expressing themselves is... Oh, I, I, I said how I felt. No, 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 no. I need for you to communicate effectively. So that's top of my list. Um, affectionate. Um, of course, let me go back to the top of my list. Of course, seeking after God's heart. I believe if... And of course, I'm religious. My dad is, you know, religious. My whole family is religious. And that's one of the major things that I really look for. And, and today, you have a lot of people who are so-called woke and conscious they really don't believe in the same thing that I believe in. So we can be fully attracted. I'm like, oh, yeah, you the one. Yeah, yeah, you... Wait, you don't... Oh, you don't believe in Jesus? Oh, oh, you finna give me a whole two-hour talk about how you don't believe in Jesus? Oh, this ain't gonna work. So I want... Because I'm not sacrificing my faith yeah, for you. Not at all. We could be friends. And I'm gonna listen to you because I love listening to other people, how they feel, their feelings or whatever. I'll listen, but that's not what I want. So I want somebody that's chasing after God's heart. Um, I want somebody who communicates effectively, someone who's affectionate, family-oriented, and someone who's ambitious. All of those, that top five right there, if you can do all of those, let's get married. Then I can work with yeah, everything else. Yeah, everything else. That is... sounds so beautiful. But yeah, it, yeah. and it, it sounds very, very nice to hear you just say, like, listen, I'm willing to work with everything. Just but you, give me, just give me that. You have to, you have to be able to be, you know, flexible. Like, yeah. you gotta... Like, relationships, I think, is a big compromise. And it's more of a... Uh, I hate to sound like this. It's a business. Like, you got to treat it like a, a business. Like, you have to put in work. If you do not sell or you do not promote your product or anything, you will not create revenue. You will not make any money. You can't pay them bills. So with the relationship, you really have to put in work. You just can't tell me that you love me. You just can't sit here and be in my face every day. I need you to put in work. I need you to show me that you love me. And by showing me, I need you to co communicate effectively. Those ambitions that you have, I need you to be working towards your goals and, and getting things done. And if I can help anyway. Yeah, like, and that's where I'm saying it's a business. Like, we have to work together for the greater good of both of us because two is always better than one. Yeah. So why not work together? Why not treat it as a business? Because you know, you ain't gonna let nobody play about your money. At the end of the day, you not letting nobody play about your money. You should feel the same way about your relationship. I'm not letting nobody play with my relationship. I'm not letting nobody play with you. If I know I love you, I know I got your back, I'm riding to the wheels fall off. And that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Exactly. And that's exactly what, how and it's that's supposed what to I, be. And that's what I want. And I know God's going to send me that or whatever. And I, I mean, it's just a, a matter of time. It's just trying to navigate through it. And, who Jesus, just go with the flow. So, did you go on a dating show actually Ooh. looking for that? So, unfortunately... Did you know what you wanted? Did you did, oh, you did you know you wanted these five core things before you went on to that dating show? And did you actually think you would find that in with somebody? The, with the dating show, with Ready to Love, I was more... I was just open. I'm like, my way, of course, ain't working yet. Jesus. Because um, you came on very open. And yeah, I feel like... I you were very real and raw about I thought that's what were. this show was about. It was older people, though. Older people and drama and other stuff going on. Yeah. Mind you, people go through some of the craziest things, the different stories that people put up with, you know, things that women go through in, in different relationships. I thank God that I haven't been through half of the stuff that they've been through. Yeah. Um, but I really came on the show as a... I wanted to be more of a light. To other, to other women, to those, to the one percenters, for the most part, who are young girls or, or older women or one those women, the one percenters. Who are the one percenters? The one percenters are the girls who just live life outside of the box. They don't have attitudes. They hang out to have fun. They about their business. They not in, you know, in everybody's faces. You're saying this is a one percent? No, I'm saying, I'm just saying, I'm just calling them the one percenters as the other, the other people. Oh, okay. I'm just calling it the one percenters. Um, but I'm saying, like, they're unique. Like, yeah. they, they outgoing. They have these witty, you know, personalities. They live outside they the box. They they're fun. They're outgoing. They don't have the, act, the attitude. They don't have the stereotype that black women get. Yeah. Majority of black women get the stereotype. That's why I come from the 99% the, with the one percenters. We all get the stereotype of, oh, you mean, you got an attitude, you stuck up, you so strong, you X, Y, and Z. I'm not that. 
I think we have that. I think we all get that. We all get, yeah. And then sometimes we play into that stereotype. Exactly. And I, for comfort. Yes, and that's what I didn't want to happen. That's what yeah. I'm not about. That's why I said the one percenters. I, that's not me. So you came on. To I show came on the show just being. This yeah. is me. I ain't got no sad story to tell y'all. I ain't been through no crazy stuff. Um, but I am outgoing. I have a great personality. I work with kids. And I, still I do. Find you them. know, I'm successful. I have a great job. My credit score is great. I got an 800 credit score. I ain't got no kids. Ooh. This is. You know, I, I'm I'm great. I'm mm -hmm. like I want to show women, especially black women, you can be nice. You can be sweet. You can have a positive attitude. You can be that girl. And there's a lot of other women out there, but they don't show that on TV. That's why I call it the one percenters. Yeah. They don't show. They rather show women fussing and fighting. If you if, if you watch the show, there's a scene of me and I'm in between two girls, two beautiful women fighting over a dude, and I'm sitting there eating my pizza like going back and forth. Like, what are y'all doing? Like, when y'all gonna stop and For just real? start laughing and like, just see how dumb it is? And that's what they show on TV. And I wanted, I wanted them to really show, like, hey, but unfortunately, I did not find love. Unfortunately, for the most part, the viewers saw kind of one-dimensional. They saw, oh, here's a goofy girl yeah. that's coming on the show to be an actress or coming on the show to just play, do around, it, play around or whatever. I'm like, no, every man wants somebody they can be their best friend with. They can laugh. Yeah, they can like have fun with. Why are y'all coming on this show on the first night? Talk about all y'all they went through. What's the point? That's not real. That's not organic. That's not what you do on the first date. And that's what. And that's how I I look at things. That's how I thought the show was gonna go. But the show is hybrid. It's TV. So you you don't have enough time to go through the steps of okay, first date. Let's be nice. And you gotta get. They were from jump. I didn't know what I had signed up for. I didn't know it was gonna go like that. Yeah. I I was like a deer in headlights. And next thing you know, by the third episode, I was gone. Because people were like, oh, I thought she was the homie. You know, she was just cool. She kind of goofy, outgoing or whatever. And then the next thing you know, after the show, I'm off the show. It's like, wait a minute. Whoa, wait. Come I back. saw that. I saw that. I'm, I saw that. And I, I saw that. I'm I like, also asked. I was like, wait, he kind of... And she was like, no, because he friend zoned me. So... Stay in the friend zone. And I, I, but they all were trying to get at her. Yes. So and, and it's weird because I didn't show Instagram on, you know, on my uh on my when I was on the show, I didn't talk about Instagram. I don't and that's one of the things I don't never lead with Instagram. Like, oh, I'm Christina or Miss Basketball from Instagram. I yeah. don't do anything. I didn't do that with the show. I went on there as Christina, uh, a marketing specialist that works for a, a corporation, for Fortune 500 corporation, and this is who I am, and I'm gonna have fun and I wanna get to know y'all. That's it. Soon as the show was over, they found out. They who you found, are. yeah, they on Instagram, you know, doing a parade. Oh man, they see me in my in my regular clothes. Cause mind you, I had just came from Greece. I was working in Greece. I had to fly back the same day when we first started filming. Sixteen hour flight, like it was, girl, that whole show. But I um, meanwhile, she's always on go. <laughs> like you I'll, always like flying right back from Greece filming. To me, it doesn't really. That it's not really surprising coming from you. But because they, you're always doing something like that. They didn't even show it. I got stuck in Greece for a whole day, 24 hours in the airport. They didn't even show none of that, but it's all good. But I was I was really there just to be my authentic self. Yeah. But you have some other people that had different motives, different alternatives. Like I was watching this, I was watching the show with everybody else. Like, when did this happen? Whoa, when did you turn into this? Whoa, what happened? Who are you? Uh, yeah, like, but that's the game of TV, and I think what they... I mean, the whole show itself is a great show. Uh, what Will Packer and Oprah Winfrey are doing, I think they're really trying to show how hard it is to date. Yeah. I just wish they would have took a different approach. But with it being a hybrid show, with it being TV, you don't have time to show all the different, you know, dynamics of dating in Atlanta. I just wish they would have kind of did it different. And I, and I, I appreciate it from the show. I just don't... Like, now, I just don't even really talk about so it. So if you could put yourself back into that situation, oh, would you I, no. do it different? Nope. Because you can still, there's still a light that you could still mm -hmm. shine on such a big, big platform mm -hmm. like that. And now I do un understand your 1%. Yeah. And I think it's, I don't know, it's, it's really refreshing hearing everything that you're trying to do yeah. just for black people in your presence. It's the craziest thing when I hear the, the number one compliment that I get. And, I t and I, I, I'm humbled by it when I hear it. But I'm always so taken back by, like, what? why is this not the norm? The number one compliment that I get 
oh my god, I just love your energy. Your personality is so bomb. That's your number I, one. Number I one. I literally thought she was gonna say something else, but what did I was gonna say? <laughs> that sounds so refreshing that you are getting that. Yeah. I thought you was you was gonna say you're beautiful for a black girl. Like, oh, it's like a. a but a I'm saying I'm saying the whole the energy but the part. Energy thing. Yeah. It's because and that comes from both sides because I think for the most part they're not used to black women. Being. being so outgoing, yeah. so themselves, so full of love and light and laughter and positive. They're not used to it at all. So when they see it, it's like, oh, wait, I've never, you're like a unicorn. You, I've never, I, why are you so nice? What you mean, why I'm so, what's wrong with you? Why is this not the norm? You know what I'm saying? Why is this not the norm for people to be nice and have an outgoing personality to be nice? Now, we got some introverts, fine. But why is it not normal? Why am I the unicorn for being a nice person? This should be a given. This should be the standard. This is nothing new. I think you are who you are, like, inside of, like, who you are with your family, and you are you are willing to be that to everybody else. Oh, yeah. I'm, you know? I don't have, I have and no... And it's not saying that people who are not are, yeah. like, phony or, or fake or yeah. anything like that, but I know that I say that I'm a social introvert. Yeah. So I like being around my friends, and I like being bubbly and stuff like that with yeah. them. But then I even find times with them where I'm just like, okay, I want to be by myself. But we all have that. I have my moments. I, I'm not going to lie. I sit in the dark. I could sit in the dark for hours. Peace and quiet. Like, that's just me. Sometimes I don't, I don't want to be around people. Yeah. We all kind of have that. But when I, I believe when you do come in contact with other energies and with other people, I think it is your job as a human being to be a nice human being. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how, how much of an introvert you are. I don't care what kind of bad stuff you had going on or whatever attitude. I think you are obligated to be nice. Well, it is the easy... <laughs> it's the easiest thing it's to so do. Easy. It's known. It's so easy to be a bitch as a oh, woman. Yeah. Especially being a beautiful woman with a nice body. Oh, yeah. You know, with they a career. You. Yeah. It's easy to be a bitch. I feel like even people... That... And they respect it. That's yeah. the crazy thing. It's like they respect it. But it's you like, can't oh. be too much of a mm -hmm. bitch or you're being too emotional. Oh, yeah. It's like it's rules with this where women are still fit inside of a box. So I do understand where people probably don't know what to do yeah. with you because you're beautiful and you're smart and you have you. And I'm not, you know, trying yeah. to fill, fill you up with compliments, but you're beautiful, you're smart, you have a good shoulder, um, you have a good, what is it called? I can't even think of it. Good shoulder on your head? Yeah. What? Is that yeah. Shoulder, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good head on your shoulders. You got, yeah, that is it. I said it wrong. I mean, Me you too. Said, you got a good head on your yeah. shoulders. You come from a great family. <laughs> why are you why single? Are you, why are you so bubbly? Like, why Why are you this? Why are you that? Why do you it's, have to be that? And you're just being you. Um, it's crazy. It's, it's admiring, you know? Yeah. It is admiring because... I think social media is a big craze and everybody is trying to fit themselves in that box to kind yep. of be I somebody. Guess, somebody and whatever that is and trying to allow it to hit off. And but, I think people that actually are very successful at it are people that are allowing themselves to be the authentic self. Yeah, I mean, you have a lot of people who play the role, yeah. you know, to be somebody they're not. And of course, ignorance, I mean, what do they, what do they call it? Um, um, Here we go with these things. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll just, I know. What a, what a little box set. Ignor ignorance, bliss. Ignorance is bliss or whatever. But you have a lot of people who do ignorant stuff who like that kind of attention, like 6 9 Yeah. You know, different. Yeah, exactly. Different people like that. But I think social, as far as social media goes, you have the opportunity to be anybody you want to be. Because mm -hmm. you can't show possibly any and everything because it's not a 24 hour camera around. But you have the ability to show and be anybody you want to be. Why not be somebody great? But actually be that person in real life. Yeah. Like, Allow people to see your climb up. Yeah, you have just to. Be, just be okay with that. Yeah, you have Since to. Since we're talking about social media, you have 88K <laughs> oh, God. on Instagram. And it's a really, really a great thing how you take everything that you do mm -hmm. and you use your social media platform to push it. And it seems like you're very selective yeah. on what you do, too. Very. <laughs> so, we already, I already asked this question, but... How are you allowing yourself to really step into who you are by using your social media platform like a lot of other people do? So I, I try not to, you know, like I said earlier, I try not to lead with social media yeah. because I want people to see me for me without the social media. Because I think a lot of people get caught up in the 88K. And I have to tell people really quick, listen, Jesus only had 12. Like, don't, don't get caught up 
into the 88K. Um, because nine times out of 10, if you look at the engagement rate, and I hope I don't sound like a little geek, but if you look at the engagement rate, it's only about three to 5%. So that's only like sixteen, maybe seventeen thousand. But I don't think that's just happening to you. Uh, I mean, it's, it's happening to everybody. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's why I don't even get caught up into the numbers anymore. Like it used to be one of but those you're things. You're definitely getting followed. You're definitely yeah. getting watched. Like, let's not take away from that. Like you're trying to take away from I that. Mean, like I understand God did have twelve disciples. Yeah, He did. You know? Praise the Lord. He had more people that was against than four. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think I use it. My well, my end goal for the most part, just with tying social media into the things I do, like with my nonprofit, is just to have a platform to share positivity with other yeah. people. Social media is a way and a bridge to, to kind of reach so many people that you probably wouldn't able to reach if you didn't have social media. Like, I'm able to, if I wanted to, reach out to 88,000 people, hopefully, um, just by putting out a post, right? And if I didn't have social media, it would require more work. Not saying that I couldn't reach those people, but I would have to, you know, legit put in more work. With social media, I'm able to reach so many different people and then use those people to say, hey, if you love what I'm doing, reach out to somebody else. Let's bridge the gap. Let's, yeah. let's, let's try to close the gap in on um, being positive and shedding the light on different things that's going on. Like, now I have a talk show uh, on Dash Radio. Shout out to my Dash fam. Um, it's called Talk to Miss Basketball Tuesdays. We talk about all things sports and entertainment. So I use my platform to have people come on to share their story. And I use Instagram and Facebook and Twitter for other people. Uh -huh. Yeah, to kind of like, hey, if you have a story, which all of us have a story, we just don't know how to share it. Yeah. And I want to be able to say, hey, let me inspire you. I shared my story. I went back to school at the age of 25. And my story, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a long story. But if I can encourage you what to share. With the basketball scholarship? Yep. With the basketball scholarship and apartment. Yes, ma'am. And then the second year, got an academic scholarship. I was on uh, college top 100 of who's who's in college athletes. Oh, yeah. And uh, so it's different little things that I've, I've been through. And I want to use social media to inspire the next generation and other people and even some older people that say, hey, let me share my story and let me help and let me use social media to be a light rather than all the darkness and stuff that we have going on now. Let me use that to be a light and encourage other people. The things that I do with Kia, that's the, the company that I work for as a product specialist traveling all over the country. That's Kia about... Kia Motor Company. Yep. KMA. Hey, y'all. Um, I'm able to go to all these major cities and meet different people. I'm able to be in rooms with celebrities and, you know, the uh, other NBA players. They think I'm, they think I'm a celebrity. You know, so I'm able to bridge the gap. And then when they come to social media, it's like, oh, my God, I love you. Because you can see, I use social media kind of like a photo album. Yeah. You ever have that photo album at home and when somebody special come home and you were like, oh, let me show you these pictures from this trip I took. <laughs> I use Instagram as my photo album to show, look at all the amazing things that I can do, that you can be doing, that I've done before, or all the amazing people that I've met. Just here's some of it, because I can't post everything. I have some stuff that I could probably would never post, but was great. But I use it as a as a photo album to That's show the people. Of the story, oh yeah, to show people like, hey, you can you can be great in your own right. I didn't have to do nothing crazy for a piece of chain. I ain't doing nothing crazy now to get anywhere in life. You just have to legit be comfortable with who you are and be yourself and know if you are yourself at all times, not just sometimes, at all times. Everything that's meant to happen for you that's good will happen. And God will see fit. You have to hold him accountable and hold yourself accountable and say, listen, God, I trust you. God, I believe in what you said. If I be me, it's going to work. Everything. Every single thing will work. So You're definitely a breath <laughs> of fresh oh, air. Oh, thank you. No, you really are. You're, you're a breath of fresh air. I, I try. those words. I, get home. Thank you. I'm so, listen, I'm so proud of you. This is amazing. Don't your show. Start. It's got, you have to. I have to hype you up because I think it's amazing. You're going, such babe. a beautiful girl. So I love you for this. Thank you for having me on your show. Um, next time, I'm going to be real cute with my, you know what I'm saying? You are already cute. You, know, you are already real cute. cute. <laughs> real you cute. are already cute. Real cute. You're already cute. <laughs> You're but, already cute. Well, thank you so but much. Thank you. You You're are welcome so welcome. You're welcome anytime. Thank and you. And I just hope that I continue just to, you know, lift this up. And you got it, girl. It. You We're got here it. To empower, inspire, and unite. And you definitely brought that energy to this couch. Thank you. I love y'all. And I love you. Yay!
Thank you so much, Christina. Please let me know of any way I can support, as Ooh. well as your amazing viewers, my amazing viewers, or anybody that must, may touch this show. Okay. So you guys can follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, uh, Facebook, MySpace, if you still got it. <laughs> uh, Tinder, I'm just playing. I don't. <laughs> Uh, it may still work, though. Uh, it's at Miss Basketball One. You can also go to my website. Um, it's MissBasketballOne.com. Um, also, I have my nonprofit organization uh, called I Hoop 2 Foundation. It's, for, it's geared towards young girls, empower them to be great through their energy, effort, and confidence. Um, if you want to be a part of that, feel free. We're going to be having an interest meeting very, very soon because we want to do some amazing things in the city of Atlanta and around the whole world. Yeah. When it comes to basketball camps, it's... Um, kind of ages between 7 and 17 when it comes to the camp. But we'll be doing more things. We're going to be doing a lot of things with the organization. Um, I've been getting a lot of traction from a lot of people who are really, really excited about the camp over the summer. Uh, so it's going to be great. Donnell. Thank you so much, Christina. You are I'm so Chanel welcome. I'm Chanel Kisa, your host of Ladies Room Live. And we had Christina Granville. She did so much. She did an amazing job. Oh, thank, thank you. you for, thank you so much for coming. You are so welcome. I will be back because we're going to have a good time. You know what I'm saying? I love this. Ladies, come in. Let's get the tea. We want to get on. Let's see what's going on. Yeah. Spill the tea. <laughs> yes, spill, spill all the tea. the tea. <laughs> Spill the tea. But thank you. I You're love so you. You're so welcome. I love you, love you so more, sunshine. Much. Come on, my black sister. Mm, all this chocolate. Until next time, thank you so much. We're here to empower, inspire, and unite. So, ladies, come sit on my couch.